Hello friends, welcome to Core Semantic and welcome to the video tutorial of Entity Framework 6. We are studying Fluent API in Core First Approach. Okay, so this video will cover how to configure one-to-one -one relationship using Fluent API. Before this, we have saw how to configure one-to-one -one relationship using data annotation. So let us see how to do it using Fluent API. Now, uh, while studying Fluent API, I already explained this case study. Now this particular part, employee and employee address represents one-to-one -one relationship between it. Okay, so we are going to consider these two entities to configure one-to-one -one relationship. Now, these are my entities and these are the properties of it. So as you can see, employee is our master entity, you can say, and employee address is a transaction or child entity of employee entity so employee id is primary key in our employee entity or employee table and as we know there is one to one relationship between employee and employee address therefore employee id is going to be primary key in employee address entity also okay so it is act as a primary key as well as it act as a foreign key of a employee table okay so i hope you understand this now, how to configure it using Fluent API? See, when you are observing these two entities and just uh, assume that you are creating an employee record. So, while creating the employee record, it is not necessary to have an employee address, right? But if you are creating an employee address, you should have employee record to be exist. Okay, I am talking about the record, not about the entity. Means you are creating one employee record, say 101, employee name is XXX, salary is something, email is something. Okay, so when you are going to create an employee record, employee address is not compulsory. But if you are creating an employee address record, in that case, that specific employee record must exist because here my employee ID is going to be a foreign key of an employee table. Okay. Now, the methods which are available in Fluent API are, see, employee has optional employee address, whereas employee address required employee. Okay, what I said, employee has optional employee address and employee address has required employee. So, the same convention we are going to use in Fluent API because the naming convention of a Fluent API method is also the same what I said has optional and with required these two methods we are going to see so let us implement it in Visual Studio so as you can see here I am using the same application that we have created while studying a Fluent API my entity classes are also ready that is department, employee, employee address, then project and team. Even I explained this part in a previous video. If you are not aware of that part, please watch the previous video. Now, here we are interested in employee and employee address entity. Okay. And in Fluent API, we generally configure our table, we have generally configure our properties in MyDB context class. Right. So, here we are going to configure one-to-one -one relationship also. Means relationships are also configured in MyDB context class which is inherited from DB context class and in on model creating method we are going to configure our one-to-one -one relationship. So, let me put a comment here. one to one relationship between employee and employee address right so let us implement it so here i am going to use model builder object of db model builder class and i already explained this object to you then we have to use the entity method here this method is actually a generic method okay so you have to specify the class name 
so we are configuring the relationship between employee and employee address so i am passing the employee data type or employee class now since it is method just put open close round bracket okay and then as i said employee has optional employee address so method name is itself has optional okay now here to this ha has optional method we have to specify a lambda expression okay so as you can see it is accepting a func delegate okay means i have to pass a argument of type employee okay and then after whatever will be my return value which is nothing but our navigational property okay so here i'll say e this is my argument so e goes to e dot employee address okay so this is the navigational property that we have created in our employee class remember this thing if this property do not present you cannot configure one to one relationship or any relationship using fluent api and then i have to say with required now we have to specify the reverse relationship now we mentioned that employee has optional employee address now same thing i have to mention in context of employee address so employee address has required employee record so that's why we use with required method so it is also accepting a lambda expression so here whatever will be your argument it will be of type employee address so i'll say a goes to a dot employee look at here a is of type what it is of type employee address okay now we done with configuration now one more thing we have to do here in our employee address this employee id is a primary key right we have to mention it okay because according to the default code first convention it is not employee address id it is just employee id means it is not following the convention so we have to mention it that employee id is a primary key and we already studied how to specify the primary key right here as you can see okay so in the same way i have to specify the primary key of my employee address entity then only this code of m1 to 1 relationship will work otherwise it will not work so model builder dot entity now we are going to configure employee address entity so employee address and the method name is has key so which is my key so i have to specify it here e goes to or e address so i'll say ea goes to ea dot employee id right so first we define the primary key of my child table in this case it is employee address and then after we configure one to one relationship so as i said how you how you will remember it employee has optional address whereas employee address requires employee so according to that you can remember this method name okay and one more thing you should have the navigation property means in your employee entity there should be employee address navigation property and in your employee address there should be employee navigation property so this employee address and employees are purely navigation properties only so i hope you understand this again i am not going to run it here because now uh, we didn't study the migration part when we configure all the rest of the relationship that is one to one, one to many and many to many after that we will execute the application if you have any questions or doubts you can definitely write it to me thank you for watching